I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, I know this is a new week, and I believe in my heart that God has worked out something already for you this week. So it's going to be a good week for you. Praise God. Now, we are in the last days for the year 2022. I don't know what your expectations are. But you know something about the Lord? He crowns the year with His goodness. And that's why today as we call for our daily bread, I want you to do so with so much faith, excitement in your heart, because God is going to grant you that which you desire. Are you ready to receive from the Lord? If you're ready, join me right now as we make this declaration and demand. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. Say this week's daily bread is coming to me big. And I receive all of it from you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now when we make these declarations, it looks simple, but you see, Number one, consistency. Number two, applying your heart of faith to it. And that's what makes it, makes the difference. You apply your heart to it. And then number two, you release your faith. Why do you release your faith? Because God commanded us to do this. So he, he said we do this every broadcast. And whenever we do it, that's exactly what he wants to hear. And that's why I said you release your faith. Praise God. And I know something, a miracle is going to happen today. Today is not going to end until a miracle happens in your life. So watch out for it and give praise to the Lord when it comes. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah chapter 26. Now, we have been on this for the whole month. This has been our team scripture for the month of December. For the Lord told us that this month is a month of peace for us. Praise God. And I've been showing you everything your mind should work on where peace is concerned. So let's read our team scripture, Isaiah 26 and verse 3. It says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. It is God's responsibility to keep you in perfect peace. Your part is to keep your mind to be stayed on Him. Now that's what I began to share with you from the early part of the month, the first week of the month, how to keep your mind on Him. Praise God. And I told you how you must receive His word concerning everything that you do. And number two, have this truth settled right in your heart he will never leave you he will never forsake you and that's where we get our peace from praise god that's why we dwell in peace so he's going to keep me in perfect peace because my mind is stayed on him now the lord was talking to me last night into early hours of this morning about, you know, you know when, when, when God begins to talk to you about his children and he was just talking to me and why do my children settle for less and you, you, you can feel his heart you know, when, when God is pouring out his heart to you he said why do my children settle for less I mean, I say settle for less, so low. I mean, so, so low. And because they don't know who they are, they accept that less as God's will for their lives. You find out that a born-again Christian lady is married and is in, abu in an abusive marriage and she's still there. She's not there because God have commanded her to be there expressly. 
she's there because because of what people would say now pastor two, are you supporting divorce i said she should pack a load and leave i wanted to listen and and listen hard because sometimes when we talk about things like this people do, would you know they don't apply their mind to understanding they just jump with the natural thing they think you want to say or they think you are saying i wanted to listen to this if you don't value yourself as a person nobody's going to value you if you don't understand who you are as a person nobody is going to treat you consistently the way you think you should be treated you must first treat yourself right then others will see the way you treat yourself and then they will copy you you see it's not everybody that can measure up to you it's not it's not everybody that will can meet up to your standard and it doesn't mean your standards are too high you see there are certain things you have built your life on. There are certain things you have um, that have become your habits, that have become your character. And that's who you are. And because that's who you are, and, and this is embedded, I'm not talking about bad habits, I'm, not, I'm talking about things you have developed yourself in. And I'm not talking about things you steal to become. You know what I mean by that? Things you have truly developed yourself in now it means god have raised you to that place and if you don't understand where you are or who you are then you will open yourself up to any kind of thing now you see thank you holy spirit and i pray the lord give me the right words to communicate this thing to you. You shouldn't be in an abusive relationship. Why? Because it doesn't speak of peace. Now, he has promised you something. He said he will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. Now, you realize in your life something is tampering with your peace. The first thing you need to ask yourself is this. What exactly is this thing that is preventing me from enjoying my peace? Now, if it's a person, if it's a thing, it's important you identify it. And then, but first of all, notice that the relationship is between you and the Lord. If your mind is stayed on the Lord, then the Lord will keep you in peace. Okay, so now there is no peace in your life. You are not enjoying peace in your life. And the question is, why? Why? And now you're able to locate that, okay, um, maybe you're married. My husband is not giving me peace. Meanwhile, anyway, I'll talk about that later. So we don't change this, the line of thoughts. My job, I'm not enjoying peace at my job. Okay. Now, you want to first of all, before you start blaming others, because I said earlier, it's a, it's a relationship between you and God. So the first thing you need to understand is this marriage what has God said to me concerning it? This job, did God speak to me about it before I got into the same thing with the marriage or whatever it is? Relationship, maybe you're not even married and someone is, has already started abusing you and you're still there. So this relationship, this job, whatever relationship you get involved, work relationship, um, job, um, uh, marriage relationship, whatever relationship, it's what has God said to me concerning this? You see, for those that are not married, before you take up that decision to get married, there are certain things you must make up your mind for. 
and you must make up your mind because see you 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 must reason it out and when i mean reason it out set your heart that this is the kind of life that you deserve this is the kind of life that you want to do i knew i knew many years ago that it would be a crime for me to suffer i knew many years ago that i'll enjoy my marriage and i made up my mind for it it, it didn't happen by accident now there are certain things you cannot especially when you walk with god there are certain things you cannot determine but there are certain things you can determine and god is going to back it up for example i i didn't know who i was going to get married to but i knew one thing that i will enjoy my marriage now that was a settled fact that's an unshakable thing that was framed in my mind now because and I, I knew I was going to love my wife. I knew I knew we we're going to have a great life. You understand what I'm talking about? That was set to. I didn't leave that to chance. I made up my mind for that. Why? Not just because I was speaking like any other person. I want to enjoy my. No, it's not. I want to enjoy my. Wife. I knew I will enjoy my marriage. You know why? Because I have seen that in God. That he wants me to enjoy my marriage. You know, sometimes, you know, I don't know how some believers, some, I think some, the, the challenge with a lot of believers, they don't think, they don't use their mind. They don't think. So, because you don't think, you leave life to chance. So I knew. I made up my mind. I'm going to have a great marriage. I'm going to, I knew it. And, and when you're making that kind of decision as a man, for example, you must also include that your wife is going to enjoy you. See, so it's not a selfish thing that I will enjoy my whether she's enjoying it or not. Now, you can't enjoy your marriage when your wife is not enjoying you. See, you understand what I'm saying? So in all ways, now, because I found out that that's exactly what God wanted for me. Okay. Now, this was my desire. This was, these were my thoughts. Then I took it before the Lord. I said, Lord, okay, this is what you're going to do for me. You know my future. You know how you created me. You know everything about me. The day you formed me, you know. So now, I'm going to trust you to choose or help me choose who I'm going to enjoy my life with. you see that now and then now you you come into a relationship with people you 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 get close to people and then you you just feel oh this person is nice oh, wow you know but then your concern is lord is this your choice what do you think about this person and you make if, if you don't if you're not convinced in your heart that God has given you the go ahead, then you can make a commitment to that where that person is concerned. So you start early to find out the mind of God concerning it. The same thing with your job. The same thing. Now, as long as it brings you in to a situation with someone or people, you need to find out the mind of God concerning it. Now, because your mind is made up that this is the kind of life I want, the Lord will begin to orchestrate your life, precept upon precept, line upon line. There are certain things, and, and you see, you do this early. Don't wait until I want to get married next year or now 2023. And I was driving somewhere yesterday. I was like, everywhere we enter, wedding, wedding. No, I'm like, God, I mean, come on now. <laughs> You know, it's like some people have made up their mind. They must get married in this year, 2022. But see, this is not when you now tell yourself, oh, then you should have made that decision a long time ago. So even, even right now, I'm speaking to the young people. But even though you're married, it's still not late. It's not late. I'm going to share with you. If not today, tomorrow. I'm going to share with you. It's not late. So God begins to bring the kind of person to you according to the desire that you have. Now, this is one truth I will tell you. When it comes to you, it may not physically look like it. But you see, 
you are going to see certain indications in it that it's so clear that God is the one giving you this. And let me tell you one thing. You know, I, I was sharing with some, some people one time. I said, listen, don't be afraid to put your desires before the Lord. You know, sometimes you, you find a lady say, I want to have, I want to be married to a man who's rich. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. And that is also not saying that um, the man must be rich first before I marry him. <laughs> no, not necessarily. But you see, you must be clear. I don't want a broke marriage. You must be clear about that. Now, if somebody says, what if your husband now does not have money? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about your desire. See, if your desire is strong, then there is no way your husband will not have money. Even if you meet him broke, his life is going to change the moment he meets you. I'm telling you the truth. Why? Because there is something burning inside of you and you have expressed those desires to the Lord. So you express those desires before the Lord and then trust him to choose for you. See that now? Now, if God chooses for you, and this is one point you need to understand, human beings can change. You must settle that in your mind. Human beings can change. Number two, human beings can decide to disobey God. The fact that you married somebody who's bubbling in God today doesn't mean that person will continue bubbling. Now, that's what we wish for. That's what we desire. But you see, every day that person wakes up, that person has a mind of his own. He has to make that decision every day that he's going to please God or she's going to please God. It doesn't happen automatically. Now, that's why I tell people there are certain things you must look out for in a person before you can commit to the person. One of it is the consistency of their faith. You must see that it must be clear. No matter how great or how little their faith is, you must see that there is a consistency in their faith before you make a commitment to that person, either to walk with the person or to, to do business with the person or to get married to the person. You must see consistency in their faith. You must note it. You can't say, um, why, why, what? No, you know, you know, this thing did not work because of this. No excuses. You must see consistency in their faith. Now, such people are people you can commit to because to break that consistency is not going to be easy. See that? Our time is up for today. Praise <laughs> God. Now, we are talking about peace. It's a bond of peace. God wants you to be in peace. And He is doing everything to see to it that you dwell in peace. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus right now. Whatever is troubling your peace, I command the peace. I think you should say this with me. Say, Father, I declare over my life right now, peace be still. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, praise God. Yeah, peace is back in your life. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.